Jim Arness uh, basically kept to himself. He was a great guy. And I loved the way he studied. He would be given a script. He'd go on it. He'd read it, crumble it up. Okay, let's shoot it. He'd shoot that page and throw the... <laughs> yeah. That's how he learned his script, page by page. That's how he worked. It was wonderful <laughs> to watch. During the 50s and 60s, there were many great Westerns, and our guest today, H.M. Wynant, did most of them. I'm talking about Bat Masterson and Sugarfoot and Bonanza and Gunsmoke and uh, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. They're all here, and so is he, H.M. Wynant. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I did so many of them. I, did, I, I looked it up this morning before I came here. It comes to like 60. Well, I know you, you did eight episodes of Gunsmoke. Of Gunsmoke you alone, You did half-hour yeah. Gunsmokes, you did hour black and white, you did right. hour color episodes. I, I did at least 60 uh, television shows, all Westerns, and uh, it's hard. <laughs> they all come together. And I think Maverick is probably one of the best. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> and you did a couple <laughs> Mavericks, I think. Why do you think that was the best? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I just think... Uh, Writing-wise, production, and the actors, your lead actors in Maverick were all wonderful. Mm -hmm. And there's a wonderful reality about it. I, I just thought it was one of the best. Well, it, it holds And I up. did them all. <laughs> you really did all of them. I did a lot of Indians. In fact, back then, I did a lot of ethnic roles, like Big Valley. I played uh, Captain Chavez, and couldn't do that today. The, back then, I, there weren't very many uh, Mexican actors or actors of ethnicities, and I, I was very good at doing all that. I could play French, Italian, Indians. <laughs> I, I did all of the ethnic roles. Shotgun Slade, there's another one with Shotgun, Scott Brady. No, that reminds me. Shot, I did unbelievable amount of fight scenes, and the best one was... What's his name? Scott about? Brady. Scott Brady. Oh, uh, yeah, I had a big one with him. Oh, I, I played such evil people. That was a, probably the most evil character I've ever played was that one. Uh, he, he, it, was all, it was called The Ring, and it was about once the detective, Scott Brady, saw The Ring, he'd know who the killer was. And it was uh, given to my fiance, Bethel Leslie, wonderful actress, mm -hmm. And uh, she, we promised never to wear it, not for a long time, because it, it would condemn me. So uh, we have this meeting, me and Bethel Leslie in the woods, wherever we were, and she's wearing it. And I was in shock, and I read her out. I was so angry. And she said that she, she wore it because, because she was in love and all that sort of stuff. And I got so angry, I, <laughs> I strangled her to death. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a bad guy then. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick her up and throw her over the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> and toward the end, of course, Scott Brady finds me. We have this gigantic fight. Then I run off, and of course, he gets his rifle, and <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> well, I had a great fight scene with Elvis Presley, too. Tell me about Elvis fighting. Oh, uh, <laughs> that fight scene lasted about a minute. It took 12 hours to shoot it. <laughs> Which film was that with Elvis? Um, it happened at the World's Fair. Mm -hmm. I played the lead heavy in that. It happened at the World's Fair. That just doesn't seem like it would be a violent Elvis movie. <laughs> well, it was about smuggling and... Uh, I was the bad guy again, of course. Uh, and uh, the very end, I've got a gun on all of them, and the little girl bites my finger, and <laughs> I drop the gun, and then there's a big fight between me and Elvis. Uh, it takes about, fight takes about a minute, but thank God that was the last day of my shooting on that film, because it took me two weeks to recover. <laughs> but 
Presley was in great shape. Went to work the next day. He had no problem. So did he have a double for some of the fight scenes? Oh, yeah. There were Mm -hmm. doubles there, but we did most of it. There were doubles there. What was he like during that time? Elvis was wonderful. (laughs) He really was. Uh, I actually met him after the shoot at, at, I think, Schwab's drugstore in Beverly Hills, and I admired his watch because he had a, a Rolex uh, with the uh, red, and, red and blue bizzel. I said, what a fabulous watch. He took it off and gave it to me. Oh. <laughs> Did you like his car, too? <laughs> <laughs> I should have. <laughs> but he was unbelievably generous, nice, decent human being. He really was. He was great. And he was a fabulous singer. He sure was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I, I had many, many fight scenes. Uh, we had a wagon train, Pearly Garnett's story. You were in a, a Gunsmoke episode where it's a flashback. It's so unusual. It was called Old York. And there's a bank robbery that's set in before the Civil War. You're the leader of this gang, and you've already murdered somebody, and you take a, a, a hostage from the bank. And one of your gang members, Edgar Buchanan, younger, yeah. shoots you in the back to keep from killing the hostage that you had taken. Well, the hostage is a young Matt Dillon. <laughs> That's really uh, different for Gunsmoke to have that. Right, right. What do you remember about Jim Arness? Jim Arness uh, basically kept to himself. He was a great guy. And I love the way he studied. He would be given a script. He'd go on it. He'd read it, crumble it up. Okay, let's shoot it. He'd shoot that page and throw the... (laughs) That's how he learned his script. He would look... uh uh, I got it. (laughs) 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 They'd they'd shoot shoot it. Then that was over. Page by page. That's how he worked. It was wonderful to watch. But it's his show. He could do whatever he wanted, I guess. Matt, he was Matt Dillon, mm-hmm. period. That, was, that cast were so real. When you go in, you never call them by their real names. You call them only by their character names because that's who they were. You've played many Native Americans over the years. And one of them, the Disney film Tonka, Oh, Tonka. With Sal Minio. Even in Tonka, I was mean. <laughs> I beat the hell out of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to find your calling in being yeah. typecast. <laughs> <laughs> thing, uh, uh, we also, in, within the movie was Custard's Last Stand. And my horse was in it, and I was. And the horse threw me on the ground, and stomped me to death. <laughs> <laughs> another I got, tragic I ending. got killed by the horse. On Zorro, another ethnic oh, part, I too. Did Zorro, uh, yeah. Disney, such a popular show still. Guy Williams and Disney, the Disney lot. What do you remember about working on Zorro? Not much. <laughs> Not much. I really don't. That's one I really don't. <laughs> I remember doing it, period. And they, they had a Zorro um, convention once that they invited me to. And uh, I, it, was, it was really strange because I have no memory of it, none at all, of the Zorro. Well, you could have probably gone as Zorro and been a hit. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all those great Westerns, was there one that you thought was better than the rest? I'll always go back to the very first one, which I think was the best of all of them, Run of the Arrow. I was doing Tea House of the August Moon on Broadway, uh, just about to close in it, when I got a call from RKO that they wanted me for my very first feature. So I, they brought me out to California, and uh, I met uh, our director, producer, Sam Fuller. They got me a place to live, uh, it was a 
Well, it, it was a, sort of a bungalow across from a Ralph's Market, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and they would send a, a limousine to me every day to take me out for uh, archery lessons and then horseback, bareback horseback riding, which I could do anyway. I was always brought up on a horse. So uh, I had two weeks of that, which they don't do anymore, of teaching me uh, how to ride bareback and shoot a bow and arrow while riding on a bareback horse. And hear this, <laughs> I, as a young boy in Detroit, in the Midwest, I played cowboys and Indians all the time. I was just eight years old or so. And here they're, they're gonna pay me to play cowboys and Indians. And I thought that was just great. I won, uh, so anyway, I went through two, two weeks of uh, instruction and then I met Sam Fuller, and uh, we shot it in Utah, in St. George, Utah. Beautiful area. Right, and that's where I met uh, Charlie Bronson, who was the other, and he played the chief, and I played Crazy Wolf. And uh, I'm trying to remember who was in it. Uh, well, Rod, Rod Steiger. Steiger J.C. Flippin, mm -hmm. Sarita Montiel. And Tim Definitely. McCoy, the, the silent movie and B-Western star, Tim McCoy had a small part in that, too. He might not have gone to oh, the location Well, that was were. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. He was at the very beginning. And uh, when uh, Rod Steiger shot, he shot um, Ralph Meeker, uh, uh, who was a, a Union soldier, and uh, he didn't kill him. He went over, and that's how the picture starts. And he went over and Ralph was still alive. They brought him to the med tent. And uh, as he was being serviced and taking the bullet out, Rod Steiger looked at the bullet and said, I only missed because it's warped. And he took the bullet with him and he, be he became an Indian. As he was trying to become an Indian, uh, Crazy Wolf, which was me and my band, ran into him and that created the run of the arrow. I gave him a chance for his life, the run of the arrow. I would fire an arrow as far as I could, and he would, uh, we would take his shoes off. He'd go barefoot. He'd pick up the arrow, run for his life while I chased him and tried to kill him. Of course, I was wearing shoes. He wasn't, and we're in the middle of the desert. <laughs> but it's, it's a great story. And it is. It's a, it becomes, it's very political story is very valid today. Sam Fuller, just about all the movies he made were on a political nature. They, they were, and he, he wrote most of his films. He wrote, produced, and directed all of them. And, and had the freedom, because these were independent films, so he was able to put on screen what, what he believed, what he liked, a, you know, Steel Helmet. Uh, Steel Helmet know. was a great movie, but all his movies were political, a unique, director because he directed, produced, he did everything. He cast, uh, he, he had 100% of everything that went into his movie was his doing. He accepted no help from anybody. And I understand he, uh, he changed your name. Oh God, yeah. On that film. <laughs> they saw me on Broadway uh, in uh, Tea House of the August Moon and thought I'd be great for this Indian, brought me out and they, my had an ethnic name in New York when I was, uh, and uh, they didn't want the ethnic name. I took, I laughed and I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, I became H.M. Weiner. This was 1956. And that was my first movie. And I went on to play other Indians. You've been making a couple of these very unique comedy two-reelers, and everybody thought comedy two-reelers were gone, but they're back. Yeah, With I know. <laughs> Biffle and Schuster, and, and you're in a couple of those. How, how did that come about? Uh, well, Michael Schlesinger, uh, he, I don't know, he wanted me, he thought I'd be right for the part, which I was. It was an over-pedantic Englishman, <laughs> no, American, who spoke with an English accent. But he was an American, and uh, it was very funny. It really, I can't, I can't describe it, but it was extremely funny. 
These are a tribute to the Three Stooges and to Laurel and Hardy right. and all That's of the what he did. wonderful two real right. comedies of the 30s. I played very straight for him, and the lines were hysterical. <laughs> it was very funny. You got to see it if it ever comes around. Well, I think it's on, uh, right now it's on Netflix, available on Netflix. Oh, good. But they're black and white, shot in black and right, white. Right, he did too. it in black and white, yeah. And, and with uh, the same style that those great comedies were filmed. Mm. Well, thank you for being here, H.M. My pleasure. <laughs>